Hey guys and welcome to another video on chemistry tutorials. So in this one we're going to cover the topic of the shapes of molecules and being able to predict them. So basically there's this theory called VSEPR theory which means valence shell electron pair repulsion. Okay and so that's quite a bit of a mouthful but basically it's just a set of rules that help you predict what is the shape of a molecule going to be. OK, so just to explain one of the key terms I haven't actually mentioned in any of my videos. OK, so you know what the shell is. All right. That's the diff that's another word for, say, orbital, not orbital, but kind of similar principles. So if you have your atom in the middle, so let's say you have carbon. OK, and you have your first orbit and, you know, the 1s orbital has two electrons in it. OK, then you have your next shell. And because carbon is atom six, that means it has four electrons left. So this outerst, mo outermost shell, that's called your valence shell. So this is the shell where all the electrons are shared to make it go valent bond. Electrons are lost or gained to form ionic bonds or ions. So this is known as your valence shell. shell. So I'm sure most of you already know that, but just because I haven't personally mentioned it in the videos, I thought I would clear that up. Okay. So basically... What this theory allows you to do is if you know how many electrons are in the valence shell of an atom, so this is after it's made its bonds, so and usually you'll have eight, for example, you might have four like this, okay? So you'd have carbon with four bonds to something else and then it will have a full outer shell. And this will allow you to try and predict based on how many atoms there are attached to another atom what shape that molecule will take, okay? So if you take one of the most simple examples that you can, if you take methane, okay? So methane is a carbon with four hydrogen atoms attached to it, okay? So typically, we might draw it like this, just carbon with four atoms drawn out all at 90 degrees. But of course, this is a 2D representation, not a 3D representation. So a more accurate example or a more accurate depiction of it would be more like this, okay? Where you have a dashed hydrogen and a wedged hydrogen. Okay, so the dashed one is coming up towards the camera and the wedged one, sorry, the wedged one is coming up towards the camera and the dashed one is going behind the page. Okay, so that's the idea behind it. But how do you know that that's how you're supposed to draw this molecule unless you've been told before? Okay, so when it comes to this shape here, this is known as tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. OK, and the way you can predict this is you need to look at how many electron domains does the molecule have. OK, so what I mean by electron domain are pairs of electrons. So pairs of electrons equals a domain. Now, these come in two forms, lone pairs and bond pairs. OK. So in the case of carbon, it doesn't have any lone pairs. It only has bond pairs of electrons. OK, so what we're going to do is on a separate sheet of paper, I am going to start to build up a table. OK, so what you're able to do is you look at the number of electron domains. So E minus is the symbol you used for a, an electron, just a bit of shorthand. OK, so if you know what the electron if you know how many electron domains there are, and if you know how many bond pairs, so I'm just going to call those BP, and lone pairs there are, you can predict the angle that all of the other atoms are at from each other, and also the shape. Okay, so in the case of methane, okay, it's tetrahedral. And it has four electron domains, there are four bond pairs and there are no lone pairs. Okay. And this will go for any molecule or sorry, any atom where if you have four bond pairs, zero lone pairs, it will be tetrahedral. Okay. And tetrahedral molecules have a bond angle of 109 degrees between all of the atoms. Okay. So between these two hydrogens, it's 109 degrees between these two. It's 109, sorry, 109 and between all of them. OK. And the reason for that is because electrons are all negatively charged, as you obviously know. But 
electrons don't want to be anywhere near other electrons, okay? So if you remember back to when we were drawing orbitals and how to fill them, remember that electrons like to occupy orbitals on their own and only when they have to will they fill them in pairs. So basically it's a similar principle behind this is that the electrons want to be as far away as they possibly can. So that's why you don't draw methane like this because this shows that they're 90 degrees apart. But in reality, they can be up to 109 degrees away from each other. So that's where they will be. So another example then is ooh, throwing my pen around. So another example is ammonia. OK, and you'll typically see it, see it drawn like this. So you'll see all three hydrogen atoms tend to kind of be shown on the same side of the molecule. And the reason for that is because nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons. OK. So because of that, lone pairs are far more repulsive. So we're talking about the repulsion of electron pairs. So lone pairs are more repulsive than bond pairs. And the reason for that should be hopefully easy enough to understand. The reason is, is that if you take the electrons in this bond here, okay? So there are two electrons between the nitrogen and the hydrogen. So at the center of the nitrogen atom, is lots of positive charge, okay? And at the center of the proton is positive charge. So these electrons are actually quite stable and they're stabilized between these two atoms because of the fact that there is a nucleus on either side of the electrons in that bond. Whereas if you take a pair of electrons that are in a lone pair, there is no other atom up here. OK, it's an empty space. So these electrons don't get to have as much positivity on either side of them. Therefore, it's almost like they're more electron rich. They're more negative than a pair of electrons in a bond. OK, so that's kind of one way to understand it. And because of that, what happens is the lone pair will actually push these bonds further away from the lone pair. OK, because if you look at it, Ammonia has four electron domains, okay? So it has a one lone pair and it has three bond pairs, okay? So because of the fact that it has four electron domains, many people just assume, oh, it's probably tetrahedral as well. But it's not because of the fact that all of these hydrogens are pushed closer together than they would be in the case of methane, okay? So in this case, the bond angle is 107 degrees and the shape is referred to as pyramidal. Okay, so if you can understand that one, the next one should be even easier. So if you take a molecule of, ox of uh, water, sorry, okay, oxygen has two lone pairs. So it still has four electron domains. It has two bond pairs two bond pairs and it has two lone pairs, okay? So similar as we've seen in the case of ammonia, what happens here at water is that the electrons in both lone pairs are pushing down quite hard on those hydrogens, but also each other as well, okay? So they're going to be more repulsive than bond pairs of electrons. So because of that, the angle is actually closer to 104 degrees, sorry, 100 and four degrees. Okay. So basically the more lone pairs there are, the more repulsion there is. And for that reason, the angle between these hydrogens gets smaller. Okay. And the same here, the lone pair of the nitrogen pushes the hydrogens closer together. So in the case of water, there's actually a few different names you can call it. Most people I think call it V-shaped but you can also refer to it as angular or bent. OK, so whichever one you remember, that's the one you go for. OK, so some other examples that are quite common is trigonal planar. OK, so an example of a trigonal planar atom would be the carbon in a molecule of ethylene. OK, so when it comes to Double bonds and triple bonds, they only count as one electron domain, okay? So even though there's two bond pairs of electrons, they occupy the same space, okay? So in this case of methane, there are one, two, three, four different domains that electrons all live in, and they're in different places. In the case of a double bond, 
all the electrons are in the same place, basically. OK, so now what you're looking at is the angle between the two hydrogen atoms, the hydrogen atom and the carbon and this hydrogen atom and the carbon as well. OK, an important thing to remember is that alkenes are flat molecules. OK, so there will be a video on the properties and reactions of alkenes. But the important thing that I hope everybody already knows is that alkenes are flat molecules. So the furthest away you can get things, three different things that are flat, is 120 degrees, okay? So if you imagine this being completely flat, a circle only has 360 degrees. So if you divide that by three, everything in that circle will be 120 degrees from each other, okay? And that's exactly what happens here, okay? So there are three electron domains. They are all bond pairs of electrons, there's no lone pairs, so the bond angle is 120 degrees, okay? And this is referred to as trigonal planar. One thing that I personally find very important is a lot of people just call this trigonal, okay? But it's essential that you remember to say that it's planar because there are other types of trigonal molecules that actually are not flat, okay? So then there's one more key example. I think this is by far the easiest of them all. OK, so if you take an alkyne. OK, so if you take ethyne. I think this one is immediately obvious. So the angle between this carbon, sorry, this hydrogen and this carbon has to be 180 degrees. OK, it's a straight line. So again, alkynes are completely flat but they only have two electron domains, okay? So the same before as with the double bond. In the case of a triple bond, even though there's three pairs of electrons, they all exist in the same place, so it's only a single electron domain. And then you have one more electron domain here, so in total you have two, and then you would say that there are two bond pairs, no lone pairs, and then the angle is 180 degrees, okay? So then this is quite simply referred to as linear, okay? So basically this table here is a summary of how you would predict the shape of a molecule, okay? So if it has, or sorry, the geometry of an atom within a molecule, it's sometimes I can get the terminology a little wrong. So if there are four electron domains, there are three possibilities, okay? It can be tetrahedral if it only has bond pairs, it can be pyramidal if it has three bond pairs and one lone pair. And it will be V-shaped if it has two bond pairs and two lone pairs. OK, the two easiest ones, in my opinion anyway, are trigonal planar and linear simply because of the fact that they're flat. So it's very easy to say, well, if you had to put these three markers out as far away from each other as they possibly can, you're going to put them out like this. Yeah. And you can tell that that's 180 degrees. So when it comes to the flat ones, I feel it's much easier to instantly be able to just work out what the angle is and what the shape of the molecule is. OK, so with these ones, you can either learn them off and learn off that tetrahedral is this angle for, say, methane. And then you have pyramidal 107 for ammonia. But I would definitely advise trying to actually understand the concept and the rules behind VSE pure theory, because it makes it an awful lot more easy than if you're shown a molecule that you might not be familiar with. So this will probably be the only video I do on the shapes of molecules because it's usually straightforward and the examples you'll get in the or the questions you'll get in the exams don't tend to be very far reaching or difficult. Um, so I'm confident if you can kind of understand these rules here and where they all come from, you'll be absolutely fine. So as always, these videos are made as part of a fundraiser for raising money for Cystic Fibrosis Ireland. So the link for the GoFundMe is in the description below. And for every milestone of uh, donations that are made, I will be making another video and you can always request videos on any topic you want even if it's one I've already covered if you'd like some more examples or some more challenging questions just send me an email or you can comment on one of the videos so see you next time guys